you're not capable of providing for yourself. You are in need of constant supervision. You are incapable of self-reliance. You are simply unable to survive in a complex world without the benevolent guiding hand of politicians and government bureaucrats. At least, that's what they want you to believe. Hi, I'm Emily O'Neill, and I'm narrating this Economics 101 video for the Center for Freedom and Prosperity to talk about the dangers of government dependency. Recently, the Obama campaign launched an ad called The Life of Julia about a female character who relies on government programs from childhood to retirement. The ad promotes the idea that cradle-to-grave dependence on government leads to success and that cutting back such programs will leave people helpless. This message is inaccurate. For instance, the ad tells the president's race to the top program for education while warning against cutting spending on education. But vast increases in federal spending in education over recent decades have failed to produce any results. Likewise, the Julie ad highlights government programs like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. But these programs have not succeeded in their stated goals and are unreliable for today's youth. Medicare spending, for instance, is ballooning at a staggering rate. And the 2012 Medicare Trustees Report says that Part A will soon be insolvent. The President's solution was to impose price controls on Medicare providers, but the trustees find this approach unsustainable, seeing it would require unprecedented levels of productivity gains by providers. Government intervention simply won't work, especially when real problems like the third-party payer system go unaddressed. Medicaid faces similar problems as Medicare, such as runaway costs and unsustainable debts. But it gets even worse. Only about half of the country's physicians are accepting all or most new Medicaid patients. And the trend is going toward more and more doctors refusing to accept patients on the government program. So not only is it prohibitively expensive to rely on government to cater to our every need, it's also downright ineffective. But these factual errors are secondary to the real problem with the Julia ad, which is that it works to erase the social stigma of being a moocher and promotes a culture of dependence on government. While advocates for big government want you to believe that the government provides a helping hand, the reality is that these government programs create more debt and do little to actually help people, while forming a class of Americans who voluntarily surrender their dreams in exchange for a life of government dependence. But I'm here to tell you that there's another way. Instead of being dependent on government, there's a successful lifestyle you can have based on hard work. Instead of relying on the government for your own well-being, you can rely on yourself. So let's look at the Julie ad as if she was a financially empowered woman. But this time, let's call her Emily instead. At age 18, after achieving good grades in high school, Emily decides to attend university. She works during the summer to put as much as she can toward expenses, but also takes out private loans to pay for the remaining tuition costs. She chooses a college she can afford and is careful to make sure that the skills and knowledge she looks to acquire will provide more than enough added earnings over her lifetime to justify the investment. At age 20, Emily's hard work is rewarded with a two-year college scholarship for academic excellence. At 21, she sets up a private retirement fund because she understands that the Social Security program is actually bankrupt and that she is the only person responsible for saving for her own retirement. At 22, Emily gets her first full-time job outside of college, rents a modest apartment she can afford, and tracks her expenses. Instead of buying frivolous items like designer handbags or leasing a luxury car, Emily prioritizes her expenses based on her actual needs. At 28, after years of hard work, sacrificing luxuries and other unnecessary expenses and putting money into a savings account, Emily wants to advance her career and start her own business. She implements her business plan for an independent media company and finds a few individuals willing to invest in her idea. Emily is obviously still young and will certainly face unforeseen challenges in the future, but she intends to continue leading a financially responsible life and working hard to achieve success. For instance, she won't take out a huge mortgage to buy a home she can't afford, and because she planned ahead, she won't be left in the cold by the inevitable failure of Social Security. The key point is this. Throughout her life, Emily is financially responsible and achieves success based on merit. And she does this without excessive government assistance, without having wealthy parents to run to, and without a boyfriend she can treat like a bank. Our entitlement culture has lost sight of the American dream. 
but the American dream still exists in the hearts of the people who are willing to work hard to earn their success and who reject the idea that the government is the first place to turn to for every problem in life. America is at greater and greater risk of becoming another Greece if the burden of government continues to increase. This is just bad economics, but that's just part of the story. If we continue to allow ourselves to become dependent on government, we're not just tacking on more unaffordable spending, we're risking our own freedoms in the process. Millions of financially successful Americans get to where they are with pure determination, while those Americans who rely on government subsidies often never achieve financial independence. It's possible, of course, to use government programs only as a temporary stepping stone, but many people are dragged into a cycle of multi-generational dependence and poverty. In today's world, it's impossible not to come into contact with some government program at any stage of your life. But while they may occasionally provide marginal benefit, they come at a high and often hidden cost. As an independent American woman, I encourage other Americans to think critically about these government programs and instead choose a lifestyle where financial empowerment is more desirable than dependence on a taxpayer. I'm Emily O'Neill. Thank you for watching this Economics 101 video from the Center for Freedom and Prosperity. Please empower others by sharing this message.